Hello and welcome to this virtual tour of Atrium Health Kenilworth Medical Plaza. My name is Jeff Rose and I'm the president of Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute and I'm particularly pleased to introduce this tour as this will be the new home for Sanger in downtown Charlotte. Atrium Health Kenilworth Medical Plaza has over 250 exam rooms and over 400,000 square feet. In addition to Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute, other medical specialties are co-located here as well as cardiovascular imaging. And this is really special for us because it will allow us for the first time to really offer a comprehensive integrated plan of care for our patients, something we simply couldn't do in the past with all of our offices and resources located in different areas. Atrium Health Kenilworth Medical Plaza will also be a place for medical education and community engagement. I'm speaking to you from our 150 seat state of the art auditorium, which Sanger plans to use to host national medical meetings. Let me once again thank you for joining us on this virtual tour, and I look forward to welcoming you on an in-person tour in the near future. My name is Dr. Dermot Phelan, and I'm Director of Sports Cardiology here at Atrium Health Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute. And today I'm with Jermaine Carter from the Panthers at our new Kenilworth location, where we have unique and cutting edge diagnostic capabilities, such as cardiopulmonary stress testing, cardiac CT, cardiac MRI, and echocardiography to diagnose the unique issues that athletes with heart disease can sometimes present with. This facility offers state-of-the-art diagnostic capabilities for athletes who either have heart disease or concern for heart disease. Athletes can sometimes find it difficult to get to the bottom of their diagnosis because of the changes that can occur in the heart due to athletic training. And so I know that athletes of all levels, from elite athletes like Jermaine to college athletes to weekend warriors where sport is an important part of their lifestyle, will be able to travel to this one of a kind facility in this region to get the answers that they seek and to get management that is related and sport specific to them. Hi, my name is Rohit Mehta. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist and director of our cardiac remote monitoring clinic at Sanger Heart and Vassar Institute. And I'm Satish Mistra. I'm one of the cardiac electrophysiologists here at Sanger as well. We're standing right now in Sanger's remote monitoring center where our electrophysiology team provides care for patients with heart rhythm disorders. We provide a full complement of care, including cardiac ablation of heart rhythms such as atrial fibrillation as part of our atrial fibrillation center of excellence, ventricular tachycardia, as well as supraventricular tachycardia. We additionally provide a full complement of cardiac device implants, such as cardiac pacemakers, implantable cardioverter defibrillators, and more novel technologies such as leadless pacemakers and devices that care for patients with sleep apnea. We additionally provide a complex laser lead extraction program that allows us to care for a patient through the course of their device life. Here in our remote monitoring center, our team of 20 cardiac device specialists as well as nurses care for nearly 12,000 patients with implanted cardiac devices across 40,000 encounters through the year. We fully embrace patient-centered care, including technology like virtual care that lets us deliver care on your terms. In this space, as well as throughout Sanger, we're integrating digital health technology, such as devices that let you collect your own EKG, blood pressure, weight, and all sorts of other health information that can help us improve your care and integrate that seamlessly into the care that we deliver. Our goal at Sanger is to deliver care without missing a beat. Hello, I'm Ken Coggins, the site-based director for pulmonary medicine at Atrium Health. This center will offer easy access to services including cardiopulmonary rehabilitation, radiology services, and outpatient infusion center. The Jan and Ed Brown Center for Pulmonary Medicine was designed to meet the needs of a growing population of patients requiring pulmonary care at Atrium Health. The center will provide general pulmonary medical care as well as expertise in the subspecialties of pulmonary medicine. We have established subspecialty pulmonary clinics devoted to the care of patients with cystic fibrosis, interstitial lung disease, lung cancer, pleural disease, and asthma. The planned addition of adult allergy and immunology will expand the services available for the difficult to control asthmatic patient. 
Being in the same building with Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute has created an opportunity to participate in a multidisciplinary pulmonary hypertension clinic. The clinic space will accommodate multidisciplinary team members required to manage patients with complex medical disorders. Space for clinical trials has also been designated as we offer this new opportunity to our patients as part of the integration with Wake Forest Baptist Health. We are excited to offer our patients these expanded services at the Jan and Ed Brown Center for Pulmonary Medicine. Hi, I'm Henry Chow. I'm the Assistant Medical Director at Atrium Health, and we are here at the Atrium Health Infusion Center at Kenilworth. And I'm Jill Mears. I'm the Registered Nurse Supervisor. The Infusion Center here is a year-long collaboration among all the different specialties to build a multi-specialty infusion center for our patients. We're excited to be able to offer increased access to the non-oncology infusion centers by offering 20 chairs at this site. By having all the expertise, including nurses, our business office, and integrating pharmacy, we raise the excellence of care for our patients that they have come to expect. We've implemented multiple safety features, including patient armbands, armband scanning, medication scanning, comprehensive chart checks. We have APPs on site to offer assistance in case of reactions to medications. Pharmacy is here to offer education to patients as well as to offer education to our nurses. We can provide services for all of our specialties that are in this building, including gastroenterology, infectious disease, neurology, pulmonary and allergy, to let them focus on their patient care in the office. Hello, I'm Sanjeev Galati, and I'm the Chief of Cardiology at Sanger Heart Vascular Institute. I would like to welcome you to our cardiac rehabilitation space at the new Kenilworth location. This space is three times larger than our previous space. In addition to having a larger footprint, we're providing even more wraparound services for our patients. Full cardiac rehabilitation with 12 weeks of service and a multidisciplinary approach. For patients who would like to perform their exercises and rehabilitation remotely, we have full virtual options. These options include the ability for us to monitor the patients and to give them instructions so they can do their exercises and workouts safely from the comfort of their own home. We also go beyond just the physical rehabilitation of our cardiac patients and we look at the patient as a holistic approach and how we can get better. That includes a meditation center where they can learn mindfulness, resilience, and self-awareness of behaviors and stressors that can actually make their cardiac disease better. And while patients are in our cardiac rehabilitation facility, we actually have a demonstration kitchen which allows them to learn techniques of healthy cooking and healthy eating for their journey to recovery. Hi everybody, my name is Elaine Jones. I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute. And I'm Sherry Alston, Community Liaison for Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute. We are so excited today to get to tell you about what is going to be happening in this demonstration kitchen. We are going to be bringing in chefs from across the county, showcasing what you can find out in their restaurants. We are also going to be teaching you ways that you can cut back maybe on salt or fat or sugar to help you better manage your chronic disease. And we are going to take away the fear that often comes with people trying to do better and make a healthy meal in a kitchen. I'm really excited about that and also excited about the opportunity to take some of the traditional meals that we have, some cultural meals that we like to eat and really make them heart healthy. I'm also excited about having patients and teammates and community members all come into the kitchen and be able to have that hands-on experience right here with us. Absolutely. We know that not everybody in the community has the same access to healthy foods. So one of the things we're gonna focus on here is bringing in local produce, creating healthy meals, and packaging those so that we can get them out to the community members that are in the highest need. We cannot wait to have you here with us playing in our kitchen. Hello, we're so excited to have you here today for our first ever cooking demonstration in our new state-of-the-art demonstration kitchen. I'm Carly Wooten and I work on the communications team at Atrium Health. Joining us here today are Chef Alyssa Weiland from Chef Alyssa's Kitchen, along with Elaine Jones, our Community Engagement Manager at Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute. 
Today, they'll be walking us through a heart healthy recipe that has a lot of ingredients you have right at home. Thanks, Carly. We are so excited to have you here. I, along with other dietitians for Sanger, really try to help educate the community on foods that would benefit your body, help you manage your chronic disease like heart disease. And there are some simple steps that you can make at home or when you're eating out that can get you to your ultimate goal of living a healthier life. And by making those baby steps, we call them, those simple steps, they add up and help you achieve your goal. So right now, we're gonna learn a little more about Chef Alyssa's style of cooking. Thanks, Elaine. Um, I'm so excited that I get to share this recipe with you. Today we're gonna be making a seared trout with a brown rice salad, and this is full of really vibrant flavors. Pulling on the natural sweetness, the natural acidity, these, these combinations of flavors that's gonna really um, make this taste bright and also just full of versatility. So there's substitutions you can make and really create your own dish out of this. For this recipe, we're going to be using beets, brown rice, tangerine or mandarin orange, fresh herbs, parsley, oregano, chives. You can also use cilantro or tarragon. We're using sumac, golden raisins, roasted walnuts. You could also substitute almonds or pine nuts, whatever you prefer. Bay leaves, olive oil, clarified butter, and rainbow trout, which could also be substitute for salmon. These ingredients that we're gonna start with is um, some roasted beets. I know we're both very fond of uh, beets. They're so flavorful, and even if you think you don't like beets, the pairings that you can add to them really just make them taste completely different. So I'm a big fan of using whole ingredients and learning the best way to break down those ingredients. Throughout my cooking classes, I'm really teaching people how to you know, not be intimidated by an um, ingredient that's not pre-prepped. So we've got beautiful um, red beets here. The greens are delicious and very healthy, so you can utilize those. But we're gonna roast um, the bulbs of the beets in a very simple, easy way that is kind of my only way that I, I like, I prefer to do them. So we're gonna cut off the tops here. And since these are a little bit long, I'm just gonna trim that. The oven's uh, set to 375 on roast, on convection, if your oven goes to convection. But we're gonna roast these inside some aluminum foil. And I just leave the tops open while I take some olive oil, drizzle a little in, and then if you'll sprinkle in just a little bit of salt and pepper, that'll help the beet develop some flavor as it's in the oven. So we'll just put them on the flat side on the sheet tray. They'll go right into the oven. They take about 25 to 30 minutes. So while the beets are roasting in the oven, we're gonna add our brown rice and steam that in the pot. If I'm not toasting my rice in the pan, what I highly recommend that everybody do is wash off their rice. That way it won't stick together with some of the dust that just sort of accumulates on the rice while it's sitting in the bag. So this is a cup of rice. For brown rice, we're doing a two to one, and I'm just gonna add two um, cups of water. Put that in my pot. Add in the water. And sometimes, when I'm cooking at home, if I wanna cook brown rice, and the beauty of brown rice is that it has more fiber. And again, this goes back to the point I was trying to make earlier about food in its most natural form. And so the brown rice with the fiber actually helps our body in the digestive process to cling onto all the impurities in the other foods we may be eating and helps to eliminate it from our body before we have the chance to absorb it and to allow it to do damage. So make sure every day that you're including some forms of fiber. I've got a couple of bay leaves that I'm gonna add in. This is optional if you don't have bay leaves, but I just like to infuse that aroma. Um, it just pairs so well with rice. I'm gonna bring this up on a high heat to a boil. And once it's boiling, we'll close the lid and turn it down to the lowest setting so that it gets nice and um, steamed. So now that the uh, water is boiling, you can really smell the aroma of the bay leaves. So we're just gonna put the lid on, lower this to the very lowest setting, and let that go for 30 minutes. So now I'm gonna grab those beets out of the oven that are ready.
One of the beautiful things about having these demonstrations in the kitchen is that hopefully it will help you to become a little more confident in trying new recipes, just like this one that Chef Alyssa is demonstrating today. I did put on some kitchen gloves because these are, um, I'm gonna get into the red beets, but again, I do try to start with the golden ones first, and that way, um, they smell amazing, by the way. They do. I love, love, love this. So, um, with them being nice and roasted, um, we're just gonna take a paper towel and just kind of smooth out the skin here, and that comes right off. And you still want to do this while they're slightly warm, but certainly not hot right out of the oven. And I'm going to slice these up into little wedges, but you could dice them, whatever anyone prefers. Our next step for these beets to make them really bright in flavor and just my favorite thing is we're going to add um, some juice and zest of the tangerine. Wonderful. So we'll add maybe one is probably plenty for this, um, but you could certainly add two. I would not be against that. We're just gonna zest off. May I? Yes, please, go ahead. My best suggestion is just to do it directly over, what, and you're doing that, whatever you're cooking, because you release a lot of flavor and oils in zesting. So we've got a bit of parsley. I'll trim off the oregano. The smell is so intense, I love it. it. But it's wonderful. you can just squeeze, this squeeze in together. all of the juice. Okay. So just toss this together. Yep, toss it together. We'll let it sit in the refrigerator until the rice is ready and cooked. With herbs, you lose a lot of flavor if you over chop them and if you also don't slice them properly. What you want to do is make those cuts really count. So we're going to roll them all nice and tight. I'm going to pinch my fingertips on the top but have this kind of position where I'm almost holding a little golf ball, but that way my fingers are protected and I can get some really fine slices. Also, when you're using your knife with fresh herbs, you don't wanna have a chopping downward motion. You wanna pull the knife back and rock through. So Elaine, we're gonna take this rainbow trout, we're gonna open it up on the cutting board um, so that we can season the, the middle. Am I doing the skin side down yes. for you to season? Mm -hmm. Okay, like so. You hold your hand up nice and high, any of your spices really, so that you get a nice even coverage. You don't just have spots that taste you know, a little bit stronger. You can see that a little bit better with the pepper as I sprinkle that on. So we've got a nice, nice bit of fresh herbs. Then I'm gonna season it with the sumac. And then we'll just, yeah, we'll just close these up. So our rice is all finished. Before we cook our trout, I'm just gonna take it right out of the pot and add to it a couple of ingredients that are just gonna make it taste delicious. I'll just put that in a bowl. And we've got some raisins. Is that about a half a cup? Yeah, this is about a quarter cup. I'm not adding quite as much as I had in there. And I'm also gonna add some roasted walnuts. So you wanna make sure you have a good preheat on your pan. So I'm gonna okay. let it sit on about a medium high heat for two to three minutes. Okay. Um, then we'll add a little bit of clarified butter. And I really like using clarified butter, especially for fish. Um, because it's a good high temperature cooking fat, nice and, um, you know, like good, good for you fats in that. To this pan. Beautiful. So it's just rippling nice and, nice and hot. And then I'm just going to set one piece at a time into the oil. So make sure you move the pan so that you have a good spot to set it in. And once I start to see that I've got some good browning all around the sides and that the fish has become nice and white and opaque, kind of halfway, okay. um, I'll turn them over. So we'll start to flip these over and just kind of give that, you can see it's got a good crust and nice browning. This looks just about perfect. I see a tiny little bit of pink um, but I know that the carryover cooking is gonna take care of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the heat off, slide the fish over, and I'll set up my plate while um, that's just resting in the pan. 
Okay, so we're ready to plate up this dish. Um, the rice, while it was cooling down, I add the raisins in it so you can see they've become really nice and, um, and plump and absorbed. Just they're a little really bit of moisture from the steam. Yeah, they just taste even more flavorful. And I'm gonna add in some arugula. I really like the pepperiness of that green with everything. Um, but as we mentioned in the beginning, if you wanted to utilize the beet greens as your green of choice for this, that's a great way to go ahead and use the whole ingredient. And we're just gonna fold in some of these greens along with a little more olive oil. And we love recommending cooking with olive oil. It's part of the Mediterranean diet. I just toss this together initially and then I add a little bit more in if I need to. All this needs to finish off is a piece of our trout. Wonderful. May I serve you up? Yes. Place that right on top. Beautiful. And then it's got so much flavor filled in the inside, the texture of the fish paired with the texture of all of the ingredients in this salad. This is something you can keep in your fridge for several days. So you put in all the work and you've got plenty to enjoy um, for another meal. So lots of ways to interchange these ingredients and make it your own, um, but use inspiration from all of the freshness. Well, Elaine, it's been such a pleasure cooking with you in this beautiful new space. Oh, it's been a pleasure having you here as well. Thank you for your talent and your time. Well, absolutely. And I hope that if you've been cooking along with us, that we can get to see your dishes. So please post and tag us at hashtag SangerHeart and hashtag CLT. We'd love to see what you're doing out there. And if you submit your photos when you're using those hashtags, you could be featured on our social media channels. So stay tuned for many, many more opportunities to connect with us and chefs like this wonderful Chef Alyssa to teach you more on how to cook healthy at home.